Hello yeah. and welcome to episode hashtag nine of the Chit Chat Podcast. What's the story, everyone? Um, hope everyone is getting by and doing well in this strange time that is 2020. Yes, if you are watching on YouTube, you would have noticed that we've done a little T and C around uh, the studio. We've updated some stuff. I've um, got some plants here next to me. Uh, don't really know why they're here. They're just here to cover wires, really. I'm not really a plant person. But then we've also got this industrial lamp here. Basically, I've had too much time in my hands and I've taken stuff from around the house and slowly everything else in the house is getting bare because I'm bringing it up here. But if you are watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments below what you think of the studio and what, what you think I should add to it. And um, I want to get you guys involved as much as possible. And if you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, I will put up a post on all my socials and comment on it. Let me know what you guys think. Now, obviously, look, this whole lockdown thing. I was just here the other day going, you know what I miss? I miss a Nando's, right? Because I'm living in Waterford since March and I don't have a Nando's around here. And I was kind of thinking about how I was a waiter. And then I went, that's it. That's my idea for the next podcast. I am joined by a waitress, ladies and gentlemen. She is Dublin born, ridiculously talented, and is about to join the Frozen family, hopefully in 2021 at Jury Lane. It's the one and only Sarah O'Connor, everyone. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh my God, I was so chuffed when I got your message. More than thrilled to be on chatting to you. And it's great to see you. Now, firstly, a huge congratulations is in order. Like I said in my intro, Sarah has only gone and booked Frozen the Musical at Jury Lane for 2021. Now, there's so much negative stuff going on in the world, especially in the theatre industry. So it was nice to see some finally good news. How does it feel to be part of the Frozen family, Sarah? Oh my God, I feel super lucky. I'm excited. I feel like it's going to be a really very different experience to anything I've done before. Um, I've been so lucky to do original cast before this and I just feel like every, every new cast you go into has its own energy and its own kind of vibe. And I feel like every time you go in, day one, you meet everyone, you know, and because of what's happening at the moment, we've already been in touch with each other. We've already kind of had our inductions and all that's really weird. Yeah. We've for quite a few more months but I'm so thrilled I can't wait to work with the team the creative team are ridiculous the cast are so talented you know I already know some friends that I have scattered around the building in different departments yeah. as well so I have to work with some friends again and I just think the jewelry lane has been done up it's going to look absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to see my dressing room <laughs> I've always wanted to work in the in the jewelry lane so I'm really really excited now, like, obviously, Frozen is such an iconic movie and an incredible phenomenon worldwide. Um, to be part of the musical version must feel so special. What was the audition process like for this huge musical, which I think we can safely say loads of performers would love to book? Oh, my God, it was so long. My um, audition process, I think it took them about a year to cast the whole thing. They went wow. in and out. I think My personal audition process was... Um, 10 auditions long and three months it's over three months so it was wow it was full on I think you kind of when you start a process you go in obviously hoping that yeah. you'll get the job you don't really put too much pressure on yourself and then as it goes on you kind of start to imagine the phone call if you got it or you know when you're doing the rehearsing or you're in the room getting worked on with the with the creative team you start to like imagine yourself oh can you imagine if I actually was doing this yeah. for real Kind of thing so you start to I guess and um, you start to kind of get lost in those thoughts and you get a little bit more committed to it and you do kind of hope that that phone call will come and it does happen yeah. when you do hard work and, and and all the auditions and you don't get the job that happens too but I was delighted that it went my way absolutely it's delighted because I'm more more than aware that there's other people that are would be more than capable to do it as well so I just felt like I was really glad that I fixed the fix, uh, kind of fixed into the jigsaw you know and like, do you remember where you were when you got that call and what that feeling was like? Yeah, I was in Tesco. Uh, <laughs> there you go, getting our meal deal. <laughs> I, was, I was in Tesco and I just remember thinking, why is my, because my, my agent was, was away in Orlando at the time, you know, yeah. on holiday uh, yeah. when, when we were allowed them. Um, and she was away, this was last September. Wow. It's been nearly a year that I held it in. I was like, oh my God, this is killing me. I How did you do that? Oh, I, I mean, it was hard, especially when people are going, oh, how did Frozen go that time? Like, you seemed to be in and you spoke about it loads and you kind of stopped talking about it. I was just like, 
I still don't know yet. I yeah. uh, sometimes I <laughs> ask, don't ask me, and any actors know kind of not to ask if I'm not telling yeah. them they don't. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, my agent rang me from her mobile, right. and I was like, she's in Florida. Yeah. So something's up. Otherwise, yeah. I just get a call from you know uh, one of the assistants or or, or yeah. someone else or an email even. Yeah. And she was like, I just wanted to, I wanted to ring you. I know I'm away and whatever, but I just wanted to let you know that um, Disney are going to be coming through with an offer over the next few days. And I just, I, I put all my food down and I, I didn't really know what to do. So I couldn't stay in Tesco. So I just kind of went back to my dressing room and had a massive cry in peace. And Leanne Pinder, my, my, my roommate, um, at waitress came in. She was like, Seth, all right. And I, I did, I did, I, I did tell her because I mean, she went through it all with me. And yeah. if I was to keep anything, like whatever, we're like such a little safe space in there. So anything that happened, she yeah. was one of the very few close friends that I told. And I just felt like, I, she walked in at me crying and she was like, oh my God, what's wrong? And I was like, I got the job. And then I went out and got dinner after that. But I just didn't know what else to do. But I wow. had to let it, but I yeah. couldn't tell but I couldn't just let it out in front of anyone, you know? Yeah. So I kind of just dropped the Caesar salad and away I went, <laughs> back to the room, had a cry. I was so, I was so happy. Happy tears, of course. But I just had to go and FaceTime my family straight away. Absolutely. Now, did you go for a costume fitting recently? And how did that go? Were you literally living your Disney fantasy? Honestly, it's the weirdest thing. Um, I have had five so far. Um, wow. five, it, recently, I had my, my first fittings were, my measurements were, pre-lockdown back in like January, February, something like that maybe. Um, so I was a little nervous going in because yeah. I was like, are the measurements still the same <laughs> after lockdown? Exactly. Not too far off. So I'm happy with that. All this stuff still fits in the gen- generally still fits. So I am, um, yeah, I, basically when you're building, um, which is exactly what they're doing. They're building the costumes for us from scratch. We okay. have hundreds of costumes, as far as I know, well, like tens anyway, of, of, of costume makers. They all do specific things. It's not like one person makes everything. There's teams for each look. Yeah. Um, so, and we're on Zoom to, to the, um, the costume designer from Broadway. Wow. Um, who's all of the other ones at the moment as well and it's just really exciting you know they get built in different types of material before the actual material that gets used for the show yeah. so it's very much you feel kind of like a hanger and then they just move things around and it makes you feel super special and then you just see the detail that goes into it it's absolutely mm. mind-blowing i suppose that's um, disney in a nutshell really isn't it disney in a nutshell they because i've actually just started watching the frozen 2 documentary on on disney plus and it doesn't shock me. I've met some of these people involved in the yeah. general, you know, obviously Disney family, nothing to do with the, the actual show, but they're the, the film, but yeah. they all have a pride and, yeah. and the, the, like, it's so safe in their hands, everything that is Disney related, frozen related. Um, and nothing will, will be less than absolutely brilliant and beautiful and exactly what the show should be. So yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome. Amazing. Now, so look, let's go back. How's your lockdown been and what did you get up to? Lockdown was obviously very unexpected. So I don't think I kind of prepped much to do, but then I kind of went straight into the next day. I had like I was, I I had a gig booked by day two because I was like, I need to keep, you know, keep doing something. And I did one. I was the very first Leave a Light on gig for the Jamie Lambert. And I just remember actually, when I looked back now, I remember doing that gig and I felt really tight and I felt really stressed. I felt very emotional. And I feel like I probably threw myself into it a bit too soon. But right. I took my time to kind of grieve um, my job. And because it didn't really, it was also up in the air. I didn't also know what was happening, I guess. Yeah. I did some baking, which was quite ironic considering. <laughs> I, and then I decided to pick up baking. Um, and yeah. It's, I did my the first big thing I did was a Guinness cake actually and it was still delicious. Oh wow! Um, it was very nice. I'll give myself that. <laughs> um, neighbors had to get some as well though. My God, there was, was too much of it. Um, I did some baking. My boyfriend had moved in two weeks previous. Okay. So this was like let's jump in the deep end here. This is and testing let's... territory like at its finest. Luckily, we've had the best time. He's a legend, so that's yes. great. Um. Honestly, one of my favorite things about lockdown, because I feel like these are a lot of negatives, but you yeah. have to find the positives or you won't bloody get up in the morning. So, Absolutely. Uh, 
we always kind of said, I have never been a massive cook because I just don't have the time. I don't have the patience for it. And I had the time and patience for it. So we used to sit down with our cookbooks once a week, plan out all our meals, try new things, um, try more intricate things, um, all that kind of stuff. And then we do a massive food shop and then we cook three meals a day, seven days a week. And it was so cool. So I learned a lot of bits about cooking as well. Again, all food related. Um, I do I do my singing teaching. I, yeah. you know, because I'm a teacher. So I've been doing my lessons on Zoom and I've been doing loads of workshops and, you know. Um, That's what I, it is, I'm, keeping the brain ticking over, isn't it? And just... Brain ticking over, doing a gig, you know. And I'm also I'm training for the marathon. Yes. Um, so it's been it's been quite busy and then I took up the care job as well. So I trained yeah. then as a carer. So um I kind of took myself out of lockdown as such. My lockdown life didn't last as long as some people's but still very safe, but obviously I, I um I needed to have some income, so I decided to go and be carer. I was just about um, to ask about that. How was being a carer and is it tougher than you expected, let alone doing it during COVID nineteen? It's very different um to what I ex- I don't know if I had an expectation to be fair. Yeah. But it's still what I thought I'd struggle with, I didn't. And what I thought, I think I struggled in different areas. I thought it'd be more, um, the, like the actual, the actual physical job would be more difficult. Yeah. Fine. My biggest thing was actually the emotional side. I thought I'd be like, yeah, let's keep it positive guys. That's my, that's my thing. Yeah. And then I got, I actually really struggled. Hmm. Um, cause I'm used to working with people when they're kind of at their, emotional best and their physical best in life and it's yeah. the complete opposite so i think i struggled seeing if people were sad or sick or down or not themselves or i think that hurt me more than anything to be fair and um, i think that took me by surprise um yeah. and I, it is tiring because um i cycle yeah. everywhere with it with this so i think you know if i had a car it'd be great it'd be probably a lot easier but i like to get this <laughs> in as well but, yeah um, yeah yeah it is so rewarding but it's tough man it's really tough and you know not paid very well either so people really need to appreciate the work that is done by carers and i absolutely get that now absolutely hats off to everyone that's been working on the front line god they're incredible now so let's talk about waitress right which is an incredible show and i loved watching it you were a swing and understudy jenna and dawn how was it being part of this incredible show and do you get nervous doing those shows best year of my life so far I think and um, I've loved a lot of show I've loved every job I've done to be fair I've been very yeah. very lucky but the original cast of Waitress absolute hoot perfect <laughs> kind of a perfect group of people cast stage yeah. man wigs costumes like everyone in the building just had the best bloody time and um, because we all knew how important and special the show was from day yeah. one that was always really nice that no one felt better than the show. There was no egos, you know, and we were working with some really famous people. Yeah. Like Jack McBrayer, you know, people came in and out of that show. and Jesus, you wouldn't know, like to talk to them. They were just so, so lovely. Yeah. And everyone came in and joined us. They really cast it so well. It was like a vibe that, you know, David Grinrod and the, and, and the, uh, the casting team had. It's like, yeah. they knew, all just love it together and have a great time. Um, And I guess maybe the show just attracted the right people. So that was amazing. When it comes to nerves, oh God, yeah, I got nervous from time to time. One of the most nerve wracking bits is obviously that beginning bit, the sugar butter flower kind of, you know, going around and it's just kind of bouncing in a circle. And if I was on for Jen, I'd be like, oh my God, this is it, this is it, this is it. (laughs) But you know, for the first few times after that, I was like, oh my God, yeah, I love this. Yeah. But then I had one night where I inhaled a load of kind of salt because the sugar is salt. And I was like tripping. I couldn't sing, couldn't sing at all. And I was like, oh my God. So every time <laughs> the beginning of the show happened, I was like, don't do that. Don't do that this time. <laughs> so once I kind of got past what's inside, like the yeah. first maybe lines or something, I was always grand. But I loved getting to play. Yeah. To play. Jenna and telling that story from beginning to end I thought it was absolutely brilliant um, Dawn was a hoot Yeah, oh, um, She's a wild character isn't she? Oh she's so funny and so relatable as well Yes, I feel like um, the nerves subsided after a few shows of each um, yeah. that time even as an ensemble member they forget that swings, you know the first time we ever go on for those 
um, tracks is in front of an audience. We don't get the practice even as yeah. you do. So if anything's going to go wrong for the first time, you're doing it in front of an audience. <laughs> Fine, you got to forgive yourself. But yeah. you know, you obviously work hard enough that you feel that that's never going to happen. Because like I was, about to, I was about to say, like I'm amazed by people who are swings and can cover multiple roles. What's the process like for you when taking on multiple characters, especially that are in? pretty much every scene together and also yeah. what what is it about being a swing that you enjoy because it's a lot of work it is a lot of work and I don't think I choose to do it every job I wouldn't want it to be my thing yeah purely because um because some people love like that is that sort of thing like everyone's like different some people would hate to do it some people want to be yeah. a swing in every job get bored I like to kind of jump in and out because it's it's so tiring for your brain yeah fantastic but also I feel like in Frozen for instance I look forward to having my own again my own track yes um, and I'm just concentrating on that and Anna um, but with this I just felt like I loved getting to do every aspect I love knowing a show really really well yeah and I felt that with Les Mis as well when it, that was my first swing job and I just I love knowing the show on the back of my hand yeah I love every day is different and um, keeps your you know your brain ticking over and nice and healthy and just mixes it up and it keeps it fresh for you, you know? And also when you're singing things like Sarah Bareilles' harmonies, you want to get to do all of those versions because they yeah. are beautiful. She picks the most interesting notes and it's not like just do me so, it's not just a normal yeah. harmony. Her ear is something you can't even be taught. Like it's yeah. stunning to start with. And the detail that maybe you don't even notice as an audience member, you don't think you hear, but yeah. you're actually, you are hearing it and it does affect you in, in the audience and in your seat and you don't even realize. And um, it's so well done. She, it's Jean. I love getting to sing all the different harmonies. It keeps you nice and vocally healthy Absolutely. too. The ups and downs. So it's great. And now you're speaking of knowing the show inside out. You performed on stage with Sarah Bareilles. For anyone that doesn't know, right? She wrote the music and lyrics for Waitress, the musical. What was the feeling like performing on stage with the person who wrote the show? Oh my God, I was absolutely bricking it. Yeah. I had done Dawn a million times. Yeah. Through the year, I'd gone on, I don't actually know how many times, I have it upstairs um, in my London flat. Um, upstairs in my London flat. I'm used to, <laughs> are, really? I'm in Dublin, it's not upstairs. That's, London is not upstairs. <laughs> I was thinking I have it upstairs and I was like, I'm not in London. It's and, you're a, London. And, you're, and you're a swing, what? Wow, can you imagine? I'm really... <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I'd done it so many times um, and the last time I ever went on um, was with Sarah, which is quite cool. Wow. Um, but I did it so well and I trusted myself and I went, just, just do what you always do, Sarah, because you yeah. do it right. Exactly. Talking. First thing I did, something wrong. I went well. <laughs> Fine. I just started doing all kinds of weird things with the pregnancy test. <laughs> Like, what am I doing? Yeah. And then I would start doing stuff I'd never done before. And then I was just like, Sarah, have, sorry, have a word of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, have a word of yourself. Like, please. Yeah. So then I just, because the negative was one of my favorite numbers is done. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was fine after that. I just remember thinking, if I sing the wrong lyrics or the wrong harmony right beside her, she's going to know about it. That's what I was about um, to say. Like, you have to make sure everything is correct because she knows it inside and oh. out. God. yeah and like because she sings obviously what's written but she also just changes things for her as a Jenna as well like no show she did was the same it was so yeah. nice and um, so she isn't precious about it either but you know sing the right line but yeah. um yeah so, it, was, it was a lot of pressure but it was super super awesome because that is so rare for the writer to be in the show and then absolutely you to... very very cool now look lame is at the queen's theater Right. If you're listening and you don't know what lame is, you've been you've been living under a rock, I think, at this rate. And yeah. if not, go listen or watch clips on YouTube. It's such an incredible piece of work. Now, for a musical that has so much story, how do you get prepared to take on lame is? It's a funny one because I think even when people come to see the show, they still don't know really what's going on sometimes. Yeah. It is a lot of information at once, especially the first twenty minutes through the soliloquy and all that kind of stuff it is a lot of information to get thrown at you and obviously the whole thing is sung through and um, yeah. for me I mean Les Mis as a man is even better than it is being a woman because okay. the bits are unbelievable having the students and stuff 
But I just kind of felt like all my different characters, you just bring them to life in your own little way. Yeah. So instead of taking on the whole story, you would just kind of like submerge yourself in whatever costume. I think costumes are a massive gift to an actor. It really, yeah. really help kind of inhibit Breaking. that feeling and really get into it, you know? And I feel like the costumes on that show really, really always mirrored what you're supposed to be feeling or, you know, how you are as a character be it a lovely lady or you're you know um yeah one of the kids in the barricade or something like that you're dressed so well to help with that um but i don't think i ever saw it as like a mount i just see it as like loads of different stories yeah so i'd see her for like 30 seconds and then this other woman and then i'd go through paris for about 15 minutes yeah and you kind of develop your little characters but they miss was a hard swing it was a really hard show to swing and it, it looks tough you you're understudy epony and i want to clear something up right um, now, I don't know if anyone else has had this, but I've had this. I've heard mixed opinions about On My Own, about if it's a sad song or if it's an uplifting song or a hopeful type of song. What is the song solely about and what category would you place it in? Oh, I, I would place it in... Oh, it's a hard one because there's such a big development through it. Yeah. Overall, I think it's just a really lonely song. Okay. It makes me feel a little bit um, like there's no home for her. So she kind of starts it and it's really nice actually because she's comfortable on her own. Yeah. That's the problem. On my own, you know, pretending he's beside me. That's not a lonely moment for her in that sense. Yeah. Because she's very comfortable being by herself. Yeah. Like I'm that person too. I love a bit of me time. Yeah. That's why is probably at her best almost she's not an awkward she's a very awkward person with marries at times and you know yeah. she doesn't have loads of friends you know kicks yeah. around with their little brother and stuff so you know she doesn't have friends or anything like that marries is her friend her best friend the guy that she fancies all that kind of stuff so i feel like it's that loneliness there's two types you can be on your own and not be lonely yeah and i feel like that's what she is for a lot of it yeah but then the last shift in the song she kind of shows, but sometimes I'm on my own and I'm lonely. Yeah. Because it's not with him specifically. Okay. So we always hear on my own thinking, oh, she's, she's lonely. It's not. She's fine in her own company. She yeah. just knows that that will never develop into what she wants it to be. So the loneliness shifts. Okay. I think, and that's how I kind of approached it. So if you're in an um, ACS les- lesson and someone says it's something else, listen to the podcast because you heard her here first. Yeah, I mean, it's different for everyone. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just a sad song. It's not just a sad song because she's talking about things she enjoys doing. Yeah. Like, she's actually telling us that she's on her own and the rain is silver and she sees the buildings differently and she has a bit of quiet time and she can just be herself. Yeah. She's absolutely happy as Larry on her own. Yeah. In a lot of ways. But you can't love someone on your own. You have mm. to have it respected. And that's the lonely element. That's oh. the, the sad element to it. Thank so you. It's very 50. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Um, In my now, <laughs> now, Mamma Mia at the Prince of Wales Theatre, your ensemble understudy Sophie, such an iconic show. Everyone knows Mamma Mia and the music. Now, surely every show must have been an absolute boogie, like having to get into dance to all those iconic songs. Oh my God. So much fun. Yeah. I was 22. I just left college. You know, I'd never really been in town before. Yeah. Mess- some of my closest friends on that job and one of them I'm now going to be working with again on Frozen Hannah Fairclough yeah Hannah she was my alley and you know it's so weird that we've been friends for 10 years and now it's come around and we're working together again it's gonna be so much fun it was just fun but you know I, I it was such an unexpected gig to happen I was in only yeah. I was still third year at CPA and you know, I just wasn't expecting a West End job to come along. Like, it was mad. So I think I was kind of just living on some weird cloud somewhere for a lot of years. <laughs> learning the ropes. I learned yeah. a lot here. I think you learn more in work than you do, even in college, because, you know, you want to observe. So I just observed people like um, Sally Ann Triplett and, and even Lindsay Haley from the, the cast before in rehearsals. I'd watch, yeah. you know, her at, at nighttime. And then I got to work with her. She was a Madam T. So it was amazing. Yeah. And, just watching like the dynamos and the Sophie, like learning from my castmates, you know, Mel Jakes, she was, yeah. um, she was the alternate Donna. I mean, she's acting in a, 
in a human form. She's she's fantastic. And the voice, oh, I just, I just, I was a sponge. I was a sponge for the air. I had a nice time, had so much fun, partied on stage and it was barely work. I mean, it was tiring at times. Yeah. But, yeah it was and, like, fat, fat, for anyone that doesn't know, you just mentioned CPA. That is how myself and yourself met. If it wasn't yeah. for, it wasn't for you, um, David O'Reilly, who we had on episode two, and Joseph, I wouldn't be in the position I am today. So it's thanks to those three that I am where I am today. So I owe a lot to you guys. Um, well, you didn't work. All we had to do is say yes. So, nah. But um, look, look, let's talk about body image, because in that show, you have to be in great shape. Are you guys told, or is it part of your contract, to stay in such amazing shape for the show? I think I struggled in college a lot with my weight, Um it's more that I struggled mentally about weight and how it's approached. It's a really, really tough subject in the colleges. Yeah. They all do very, very differently. Absolutely. But I feel like it's changing in a lot of ways because there's so many things you can't say to people now. Yeah. Um, and you deal with it. Like you hear back in the day, like going to certain colleges and they weigh you. And, yeah. you know, I keep getting trouble. I was in the kind of fat gang in, in, in college and I was a size 10. Like I, a size. It, but, but it was about, it's about fitness. And it's about, you know, yeah, I wanted to be more toned. And I did, I fluctuated up and down a couple of pounds every now and then. And it was frustrating. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes it'd be due to stress or lack of knowledge on food. Or I tried everything to, to change yeah. my weight. I think I also just needed to be, a, I needed to grow up a little bit more, lose a little bit more chubbiness around my face, all that kind of thing. The pressure was a lot. Okay. My body did start to change through my 20s. I felt like I was more in control. I was more educated on things. So my way of looking at the, when it came to things like being a Mamma Mia and any, anything to be on stage, I think you want to feel comfortable in your own yeah. skin. That can be whatever size that you are or that yeah. you want to be. Go and be that, you know, and that's fine. And I think but it's important I, I would for women. Past, yeah, I mean... We were never told as such you have to be this size to play Sophie or anything like that. Yeah. But also it's in your contract. If you get cast at this size or whatever, whatever your size is, doesn't matter, eight to eighteen, yeah. doesn't matter. If you get cast in that, you cannot go and change your body completely. Yeah. Because of costumes and that's what was cast. Yeah. You know, um, so it it's not like, oh, you need to stay fit and you need to stay thin and young and all there's nothing like that. It's we cast you how you are. We we love who you are, but don't go and gain a load of weight or lose a load of weight because then we yeah. have to change the costumes because they're very intricate costumes though. Yeah. as well a lot of eating. That's not the easiest thing to take <laughs> out. Um, you know, and little maneuvers every now and then. Yeah. I mean, fine, a couple of pounds, but to be um, have a massive change in any kind of a contract is always yeah. an issue. Unless obviously it's a pregnancy or something, and that's and incredible. But yeah, yeah. On the topic of, of body image, what would yeah. you say to women um, about embracing their body image? And what would you say to women that are self-conscious of it? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I'm probably not the best advocate in the world because I am very hard on myself. And, I, I, you know, and I'm not 100% happy with my body. But I do love my body for getting me up every day. Absolutely. And I'm so grateful for that because, you know you will have injuries happen and you will have sicknesses happen. And especially in a time like this, I mean, touch wood, I've come out of it. That, that itself was a great thing that I didn't get sick or, you know, you know, I keep touching wood just when I say so. Um, but I just feel it's not about how skinny you are or anything yeah. like that. Me, are you healthy? Yeah. Are you fit and healthy? Because fit and healthy comes in every size. Absolutely. But we're all built differently. And I do, yeah, of course I want to be, I want to kind of nip and tuck these bits and bobs, but I also have worked hard for what I do have. Yeah. You know, sometimes I feel a bit better, I have better days than other days, but I will just say to people, and it, you know what, we talk about women in this industry, the men are under a lot of pressure too. Absolutely. Like, you know, they all need a six pack and to be tall and no, do they hell, we're all human and come in different shapes and sizes. How boring would it be to go to a show and just see a load of six packs and a load of long legs? <laughs> The six packs are great. The long legs are great, but we all, yeah. the, the, it's not real. It's Absolutely. not real. So shows definitely are, are getting so good at casting. Loads of different shapes, sizes, you know, heights. Yeah. Everything. I just think it's fantastic. It's nice to see real people, but be fit. And the only the reason I say that is because it makes your life so much easier and it makes Absolutely. doing it 
week. Like HS week's hard on the body. So you want to be fit and healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now a marathon, well, right? Which you are uh, now training for. Why a marathon? Still, still going. <laughs> um, sorry, I missed the last part there. I just want to know why a marathon. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've not. Okay. I, th- I think Kurt, I live in, I live in, in, like in the Woolwich area. Yeah. Okay. And that's mile three. Okay. Right. I always see the marathon lot on that Sunday going in and I, I feel guilty every year. And I always kind of go, that must be incredible. And that yeah. and she be unreal. I mean, my, my granddad was a great runner and I think, I mean, he laughs at me because I'm so slow, but he's like, oh, sure. Yeah, I could have run it backwards in that time, kind of. <laughs> um, he was an incredible runner. Yeah. And my dad, well, for MS in Dublin, 1986 or wow. four, uh, um, in the early 80s anyway, and he ran it as well. So I just feel like I... I like to just push the boat out, do things if I, you know, things that make me feel uncomfortable. And then because yeah. I did, the, I've achieved something. Um, and I just wanted to give it a go. Running is not natural to me at <laughs> all. I'm weird. I feel uncomfortable. It's very painful. Not yeah. particularly enjoying it now. I've been enjoying it. Yeah. Um, but now I'm having to retrain a little bit more because I've been training for like a year. I'm, I'm ready to, to forward to because like I would love to do one and part of me is I don't know why because I don't like running number one and I get bored so easily on a treadmill and I can't keep my brain and now look you are raising money for a charity um, yeah. so please could you tell us the charity you are running for and where people can go and donate yes Brain Research UK they're basically the because um, you have loads of brain research related um, charities so like mind alzheimer's society like they're it's an umbrella it's an umbrella charity that takes care of all of the different areas of your brain so that can be you know anything from a tumor like a physical thing yeah to more an emotional situation like your mental health okay so it, really, they do so much work they are incredible they're so supportive and um, i have the link to my um virgin just giving page um on my instagram I will so, leave a link below in this video because mm-hmm. I'm going to donate myself and I'll leave it on all the podcast streaming services one as well, as well as all my Instagram and socials. Um, so yeah, I, get I, on it. Had, you know, I've had, I've literally had um, anything from 50p to 20 quid, like it, it, anything at all. It's that every little bit counts. And sometimes just Absolutely. the messages are as important because it'll get me across the line and you know, I know it's a really tough time to be given to charity as well. And I do appreciate that. But I just feel like I put it up to 3000. That, that's what my goal is because I just felt I'm doing this once and once. <laughs> I ain't doing this again. Absolutely. Now Over look, it. because I like to keep the podcast short, I have one little topic to talk about and then we're going to introduce something new to the podcast. Let's Over. just talk about the commitments. Um, <gasps> like that seems such a fun and wild show to do when you performed with a few Irish heads like Jessica Shervey, Killian Donnelly and so on. How fun was it to perform on West End with people from home? Oh my God. It was like the job you never think would happen. It's yeah. stupid to even think about <laughs> getting commitments, original cast. I just remember hearing about it a few years previous. Um, I think it was true Killian Donnelly or something. I think he'd done a workshop or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, I'd love to play Amanda Quirk. And yeah. I just remember messed up my first audition so bad I was like oh for god's sake that was perfect what, I, what was I doing like anyway it happened I don't know why yeah. I don't know how that happened when I got a recall and then from then on I tried not to mess it up each time but yeah um, oh my god it was so nice to be surrounded by Irish people every day yeah it, they we're just I just love Irish people I love English people I love Absolutely. Irish people. they're so open they're really normal you know, we get each other. There's no explaining jokes. It just yeah. is. <laughs> explaining it's jokes. A the line, and I love that, you know, and it did, it did up my, my, my mother did have a few comments though, that my cursing had kind of right. developed from mm-hmm. outside so much of it in the show. I think my, my potty mouth is a bit worse on my day to day life as well, but sure. <laughs> I didn't find that back down, but I was there for two and a half years. Wow. Having time, but man, it was tough. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, all that song. Soul singing is tough at the best of times. Eight shows a week, four times the weekend. 
yeah, it took its toll. I, I slept for about a week and a half straight. Never mind trying to have a conversation after that again. <gasps> so tired. I was absolutely wrecked. But I mean, I'm out of quirk. Live the dream, man. Absolutely. It was unreal. Now, yeah. look, before we go, I've created a new segment to the show called If You Don't Know, Get to Know. I have 20 random questions for you to answer, Sarah, but you only have 60 seconds to answer as many of those 20 questions as possible. Would you be up for giving it a go? Yeah. Is it multiple choice or is it just an answer? An answer. Oh, okay. So Ah! we're going to reset this timer. I have 20 questions. I'm going to put on the minute timer and then we'll go. I'm actually sweating. Here we go. Okay, let's do it. Just 20 random questions. That's all it is. First thing that comes to your head. Here we go. Three, two, one. What's your favorite color? Green. What's the last thing you ate? Blueberry muffin. What's your favorite musical? Waitress. What's your go to audition song? Oh, uh, pulled from Adam Stanley. What's your dream role? I don't know yet. It hasn't been written. <laughs> Who's your inspiration? Motivation. Favourite holiday destination? I want to go to Bali. Absolutely. What animal would you be for a day? A giraffe. Favourite venue to perform in? Oh, palace. When's the last time you cried? Today. Go to takeaway? A tie. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, oh, um, I don't know. Jack uh, McBrayer. Favourite clothing shop? Oh, three people. Who is the messiest person you know? One of my old housemates. What is what makes you unique? I'm not. <laughs> we just got it. We just ran out of time. <laughs> oh my god! The sheer oh, panic man. in your face was That's brilliant. Me. We got I did to not we got to fifteen out of twenty. I never um. I, I never can think of who, I, who my celebrity crushes is, actually, because it changes all the time. Yeah. I saw what I think about Zac Efron, a load of girls ta- thanking Zac Efron from growing up from High School Musical and being with them all these years, because he did that thing, you know, the new documentary that he did and all that kind of stuff. Like, a, a guy you'd fancy at all of the ages. Yeah. I get um, that. Look- Look, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It really means a lot. You're an absolute gem, and I wish you nothing but success for the future. Ditto for you, man. You're brilliant. And the minute we get out of this, you're going to be snapped up in no time. You're a legend. Oh, thank you. Hopefully, Bye. hopefully. And remember, guys, to donate to the charity, the link will be in below, which Sarah is running for. So make sure you go check that out, and every little helps. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on Instagram at the Chit Chat Podcast, on Twitter at the Chit Chat underscore, and on Facebook at the Chit Chat Podcast. Guys, I'm Evan O'Hanlon. Thank you so much for listening.